Okay, so what we're going to do today, we're going to take a look at kites. The aim of this lesson is, is that by the end of the day, you can go down to the beach, you can look at any one type of kite, and you can say that's a sea kite, that's a bow kite, that's a hybrid kite, and you can start to tell a little bit about the characteristics of each type. So you know a little bit about how a sea kite is going to behave, you know a little bit about how a bow kite is going to behave, and the differences between the two of them. Okay, so. We're going to start by looking at sea kites and bow kites. If you think about this, think about there's two separate families of kites. Okay? The sea kite is the daddy kite, the bow kite is the mummy kite. Now going back in time, back to 2000, 2001, when kite surfing first really appeared, the only kite you could possibly buy was a sea kite. These things named originally enough because they look like a sea. Okay, formed in a C shape, and if you laid them down on the ground very often, they would look like a rectangle. They've got very definite corners where the lines attach at the corners. Most importantly, a C kite does not have a bridle of any form. Now, this is important, even if that is simply a fifth line running up the center of the kite and then splitting into two where it attaches to the leading edge, that is still classed as a bridle. A, a true C kite should have no form of bridle. It may have a fifth line, that fifth line will attach in the centre of the leading edge and the four of the lines will attach at the corners, at those four corners that we've talked about already. Okay, so they're the defining characteristics of a C kite. It will have a distinctive C shape, which is the obvious giveaway, and it will have no bridle. Bow kite, on the other hand, much more distinctive swept back wingtips. Okay, this is because they're allowing space for the bridle. So again, if you laid it down on the ground, it would look much more like a bow shape. So it'd be a much flatter profile, much, much rounder front with a straight back. Okay, that's a really easy way of thinking about a bow kite, how it would look laid out on the ground. Bow kites will always, always, always have a bridle. This is absolutely crucial to a bow kite. It has to have a bridle, but otherwise it's not a bow kite, no matter how bow shaped it looks. A bow kite will also generally be much flatter than a sea kite. So a sea kite, we said, is, is a C shape. A bow kite will be much more, well, much more of a bow kite. You can see how these things are very originally named. So they're the mummy and the daddy. So again, back in, back in the day, the sea kites were all that existed. That's what everyone used to ride. In about 2005, 2006, Bow kites were introduced to the market and they very quickly kind of moved to market dominance. However, the manufacturers had a problem. Now back in the day, when, when this change was going on, you would rock up at the beach as a big macho man with your new bow kite and your mates would all laugh at you. There was a bit of a, a thing on the beach, if you rode a bow kite you were called a bowmosexual. Because they were easier, because they depowered, because they were safer, these die-hard sea kite riders didn't like them. They used to take the piss out of the people who were riding bow kites. Which, to be fair, wasn't very fair, but it used to happen. So the manufacturers had a problem. The marketing people had a problem. They had this product that was in all ways superior, but they really struggled to get the product out there because people didn't want to buy it because of the, the slightly pink, let's say, image that the bow kites had. So what happened was over the years, the manufacturers invented this third type of kite, which if you like is, a, is the child of the sea of the bow kite, which is called the hybrid kite. Now, if you look at most modern kites, pretty much every single kite you will see on the beach these days is some form of hybrid kite. It may be a hybrid C, i.e. it's a hybrid kite which retains some of the characteristics and probably looks more like a C kite, or it may be a hybrid bow i.e. it's further towards, it inherits more characteristics from its mother, the bow kite, okay? But it will be somewhere on that scale between C and bow. Very rarely you see a true C kite anymore. I can only think of two or three manufacturers at the top of my head that are still manufacturing true C kites. Most of them are slowly dying out. Very rare you see what you would call a true bow kite anymore either. Again, most of them are dying out and are becoming these hybridized versions. So most of the kites you will see on the beach any one time is a hybrid kite and they retain some of the characteristics i.e. in looks but also in flight characteristics of the sea or the, the hybrid or the boat kite that they come from. Just to really confuse things, 
So, uh, sorry, before we go that, here's the lineup. You can see the basic differences between bow, C, and hybrid kites. Bow kite is very, very flat. Hybrid kite is generally somewhere in the middle. And a C kite is very C shaped with those distinctive corner points on the beak where the lines attach to the edge of the corners. Okay? Finally, just to really confuse things, we have the delta kite. Now, the delta kite, if you like, is kind of the one of the, the bastard offspring, if you like, of the hybrid kite. It's a different type of hybrid kite. Basically, generally, delta kites are short and fat. Now, again, if you think about Top Gun, think about Tom Cruise's F-14, he can either fly in two positions, he's got the wings forward or the wings back, the swept back wingtips. So the F-14, the Eurofighter Typhoon, things like this, these planes are designed on a delta wing configuration. And this kite is designed to mimic that, i.e. the angle from the tip of the leading edge to the back of the wingtips should be over a certain degree. I think it's about 15 degrees to be classified as a delta kite. What this does, what's happened though generally now is that again, with, like the hybrid kite, manufacturers are using the term delta to describe anything that has delta type characteristics, which we'll talk about in a while. But generally these kites tend to be shorter, fatter, a lot more material in the middle, and a very high angle of sweep from the leading edge back to the trailing edge. So that's the, the visual differences between the kites. But when we're actually talking about the flight characteristics of the kites, it's actually quite simple, okay? Sea kites generally, if you think of what the, big, the major difference between sea and boat kites is, it's the bridle. That's what makes the big difference. And let's think of it this way. What you've got on a sea kite is you've got the edge of the kite and the lines attached at either point of the, the, those corners that we've talked about already. Okay, what this means is that maybe, let's say you've got a thin sea kite, there may only be 30 centimetres of difference between where the centre lines and the back lines, and the power lines, and the steering lines attach. Okay, that means that when you pull the bar in, that kite actually changes its angle of attack very little. It only changes it a little bit. On a bow kite, because you've got the bridle hanging off the, the very front of the leading edge, and the back lines attaching right at the back of the kite, there may be as up to a metre, a metre and a half between the front and the back lines. So when you pull the bar in, there's a huge change in the angle of attack of the kite. What this gives us is a massive amount of depower on a bow kite, on a kite with a bridle, should I say. Okay? So there's a, this is the major characteristic difference between a bow kite and a sea kite. A bow kite has a massive amount of depower. A sea kite doesn't because of the bridle. So what does this actually mean in terms of flight characteristics? Well, first of all, it means that a bow kite is somewhat safer because you let go of the bar and the kite depowers an awful lot. This was the major, major factor that led to bow kites being introduced. Also, you can make, they're a bit more forgiving because you can make a mistake, you can put the kite in the wrong position, you can let go of the bar and rather than being ripped off downwind, the kite just depowers and you can complete the manoeuvre. So they're a little bit more forgiving in that sense as well. The major characteristic that you will notice when you're flying the kites, apart from the D-power, is in the turning power. Now, if you think what you're actually doing when you turn a kite, really, really simple. What you're doing, there's your kite. To turn the kite to the right, all I want to do is stall the left side of the kite. So this side stalls, the right side stays powered up, so it swings the kite around, sorry, to the left-hand side and vice versa. If you almost turn the kite to the right hand side, you stall the right hand side and the left side steers through. So you keep in power in one side of the kite. Now, thinking of that, a bow kite depowers much more than a sea kite. We already know that because of the bridle. So when you come to turn a bow kite, you've got a lot more ability to depower that half of the kite. So you can really depower half the kite, which means that you lose all the power on one side, which means the kite turns and I don't want to say faster here, it means the tight kite has a much tighter turning circle. But, because you've really depowered half the kite, you lose an awful lot of power in that turn. So it turns in a very tight turning circle, but it can turn with an awful lot of kind of power on, power off motion. So you can get jerked through the turn quite easily. A C kite, because you haven't got as much ability to depower that half of the kite, will generally turn in a much bigger turning circle, but will turn with a much more consistent power delivery. Now, why does this matter? Well, this is very useful if, for example, you are a pro who is doing mega, mega loops, 
or super moves with massively powered kite loops. What you don't want is for halfway through that kite loop for the kite to suddenly give up the power and you're sent plummeting towards the ground. You want predictable, stable turning power and speed, which is what a sea kite delivers. It doesn't necessarily deliver a big wind range because it hasn't got the D power that a bow kite has got. It's not necessarily as safe because you can't depower it as much. But it's much, much more consistent power delivery, which when you can handle it, can make it a slightly nicer ride for doing your big freestyle tricks, which is why the pros, the freestyle pros at least, tend to ride sea kites as opposed to bow kites. Okay. So that's your major differences between sea and bow kites. And you can see then that your hybrid kites are just going to come somewhere in the middle of that. So your hybrid kite is either going to be characteristic-wise closer to the bow kite, i.e. it's going to have more D power, tighter turn in circle, but more but less stable power delivery. And your C kite hybrid kites are going to be more to the side of stable power delivery, but less D power. So it's going to be somewhere on that spectrum between C and bow. Delta kites are generally what's called low aspect bow kites. Don't worry about that much at the moment. We will talk about that in a later presentation. But what it generally means is that they are stable in low winds. So what it means, what this is great for us as a school, for example, or when teaching beginners, because it means we can take you out in lighter winds with less kite in the sky, so there's less that can go wrong. It also means the kite's less likely to fall out of the sky in those light winds. Also gives you very, very stable power delivery and very, very easy relaunch. Again, for reasons which we'll discuss in a later lecture. But that's your delta kite. Again, your short, fat, very swept back bow kites. Okay? So that's the major differences between what I would class as the four major types of kite that you're going to get. And again, these have been confused by marketers, so you can get delta style C hybrids, which starts to blow your mind a little bit. But all the manufacturer is saying is it's got delta type characteristics, it's somewhere on this, on, it's a hybrid kite closer to the C side of things. Okay, so hopefully you can start to put these things together and work out what kites are. A really good exercise for you, get online, go down the beach, do whatever you can do and just start spotting the different kites and just start, okay, that's a C kite, that's a bow kite, that's a hybrid kite. Again, most of them are gonna be hybrid kites, that's a top tip, okay? But try and spot which end of the scale it's at. And then just try and remind yourself what are the characteristics of that type of kite. As I say, we'll talk more about why these kites have these characteristics in a later presentation. So don't worry too much about that now. Just for the moment, get used to the ideas of these different families of kites, if you like.